with fall around the corner. Football is back, America, and we're underway on EA Sports. This taken in about four yards deep. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. They're rolling 20 yard line. the 22 after a gain of two and it brings up second down well sometimes as a running back you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be but in this case there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd from the 22 here's second and eight I'm trying to collect. hey Tuesday 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 Now Gurley, and he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. On the carry. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. From the shotgun, Ryan. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Atlanta. Well, remember, they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time they get it to him the more conventional way, and it's much more successful as well. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. The number 13. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Second down and in inches. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. It's second and inches at the Saints. Here's Gurley now out of the gun, and he's going to get it down to the 33-yard. line here that's another Falcons first and ten at the 33 yard line Let me breathe. Let me breathe for a minute, man. Let me breathe for a minute. Let me breathe. It's too hot to tap off the wax. 
So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Someone's looking fresh, and his own line is definitely looking their chops. Everyone likes to run block. If you're an offensive lineman, nice early burst, nice gain, too. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. He'll look to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. 11 yards there, first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Mike. Mike, Back to the ground game here, Gurley. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Here's the option. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Three yards on the keeper, and it's fourth down. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right. Reads the play and makes sure he spills it for a small gain. Dan Bailey now for the field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. A 25-yard attempt. And it bangs off the right, upright, no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. So from nothing less there than chip shot distance, a tough miss from the right hash mark. Well, this is just a wobbler. I mean, he knows he's got to get it going left, but that was right all the way. not going anywhere to start the night. They stop him at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Gain on the play. Second and 10 at the 20-yard line. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Time to the tailback. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. That's when you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Shotgun snap to Allen. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Complete. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Get the 
Now they'll run it on the toss. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. He was brought down. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Allen on third. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by DeMonte Casey. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. The Falcons take over first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Four minutes to play here in quarter number two. Little jet sweep to start the drive. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. And off the option, he'll try and run with it. The keeper gets him seven that time, but it'll lead to a third down. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. He rifles one that's intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Earl Thomas. And a big return will get him all the way down to the 35. That, Charles, the first interception he's thrown here in year number two. And I know it's just the first one, but didn't it feel like what we saw from him last year where he was plagued by this type of a play? And they thought that, you know, over the offseason, going into a second season, some of that would go away. Thus far, still looks a lot like his rookie year. So after the INT, it's Allen. And he will find his man on the outside. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there, freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. About three yards there to the 27. By number 22. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. We remind you that coming up at the half, we'll hand things off to Jonathan Coachman standing by in Orlando. He'll have scores from earlier today, plus a look ahead as well, so you won't want to miss that. A lot going on here in week one. Now in third and two, they're going to elect to throw with Allen. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, time to perfectly 
and knocked it free. And Lutz puts this one through. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. They got the interception, but very little movement after. That forces them to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due. And that's to the defense because they ran out to the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire. And they did, holding them to a field goal. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. This one a little slow to get cooking. Just a 3-0 scoreline as they begin with a first and 10. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. One-yard gain. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. It's now third and nine. Now this time he'll look to throw. Got a man over the middle and it's complete. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They run out of the shotgun with Gurley. And a five yard gain gets him to the 42. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. And five. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. He'll let this go for the end zone. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. Brings up third and five. to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. The 20. And he almost made it, but just short. Finally out of bounds. Right down around the goal line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Time is they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and goal. Second and goal at the Saints' two yard line. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Big play if you think about it right now in this season opener. It's third and goal. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. I don't think Gurley got there. Looks like the defense held him back. And likely time for one final play here in the half. So they will go for it on fourth down. So we have reached halftime here in the Thursday night opener as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, we'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. Taken about seven yards deep, and we will not see a run back here from Harris. Come 
The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. To number 20. The first down screen pass, good for five. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid gain. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run-pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? about the 38. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. So here's a first and ten at the 38. First down, Saints. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's dropped right at the 40. Another Gain of three. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. to his running back and he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple for the running back oh that's a real nice job there by the defensive front they just engaged and held their ground but how about the guy who made the play we often talk about whether they take a good first step or not many times you just don't take any step just get your feet moving get your body going and then once he made the read he was able to make the play here's a throw dropped off to his fullback Call it a gain of three, and that'll make it third down. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position. It's actually utilized more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it, but he's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put there. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage there. You might out of a smaller back. from the gun on third down. Into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by A.J. Terrell. Pass the 20, and now off to the races, down the right side. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Falcon defense has a touchdown. Dan Bailey lining up for the point after. Well, it certainly looked to me like he tapped into the quarterback's thought process there. And what I'm hearing more and more when I go around the league, defenders sitting in on quarterback meetings trying to learn more about how they think so they can be in the right position, to be in the right spot, as he was there to pick that one off and take it all the way back for a touchdown. Taken about seven yards deep. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. At their own 25-yard line. The 
Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. Second and ten, third quarter of the season opener. Now they try the right side here. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. It's a loss of seven. And now it's third down. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half. And that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse. And I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. to the air. Allen. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. Now here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. Turnable here from the 38. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. The yard brings up second and 11 at the 40-yard line. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. You need to give the ball away here in the fourth quarter while you're just holding a slim lead, but that punt absolutely ideal. They pin them inside the five-yard line. They give their defense a really nice opportunity. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. No, he almost had it. Already with one interception, just missing his second there. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this when I think the part of their plan was to hit him over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. Now 
Allen now on third down. And that will be incomplete. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. And where will this be spotted? The side judge says it went out just across midfield. Their own 48 yard line. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? They know what the four-minute offense is. You're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays. But it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. Oh, I came to my feet on that one. I thought he was getting close to breaking that one big. But in the end, give some credit to the defense, finding a way to get to him and forcing a third down. The battle in the trench is never more important than right now. This is third and inches. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and it's going to yield a new set of downs. 42-yard line. to the ground, this time with Gurley. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Eluding the pressure right. And his throw here is incomplete. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Now an option play, and he'll keep it. And he will cross the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. On the pickup, it's second and eight. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. shotgun he'll look to throw it's caught Jones now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans number two and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down they run it's Gurley and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. At the 19-yard line. Here we go, get off the field. 
They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And he'll get this down only to the 18. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter. Do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football, and I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I don't want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw out to the perimeter, maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. A third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. They'll look to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. It'll go as a gain of 9, and that should write an ending to this one. At the 9-yard line. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. for them to get that first game under their belts. For you and I, that first Thursday night game also good for us to get that under our belts, wasn't it? It was no longer preseason. We were into the regular season, the first game of the year. And you know, all eyes were watching this when everyone was excited that football was back. And it's just special. You could just feel it. It's so good to have the pigskin back out there. It'll be crisp fall weather before we know it. You got that right. But I love the build up to it, right? All day long anticipating it. And then we got here and we saw a game, the first game of the year. Let's keep going. So for Atlanta, they begin the new campaign with a victory here in front of the home crowd in the Thursday opener. And now they'll have a few extra days here before they face Cincinnati next week. Meanwhile, for New Orleans, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll look to get back on the beam next week as they host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers.